I was born and raised in Slovakia, but I am originally a gypsy. So who are Roma people? We can trace our ancestors back to India over a thousand years ago. Ever since then, Roma people have been traveling and settling all over the world. Roma people face enormous challenges and we have been discriminated against through our history. We are often seen as outsiders even if we have been living in a country for hundreds of years. Despite all of the challenges, our people are strong. We create culture, community, and creativity. We are resilient. I grew up in a small town in, in Slovakia. Um, grew up in a farm with my family. Um, wasn't very rich. We were struggling a lot growing up, but my childhood was fun. I liked where I grew up. Um, when we first moved here, it was, uh, I don't know, it was kind of weird. I didn't like it. I Obviously, it was hard there back in Slovakia, but coming here was hard, you know, again, because we had to leave our grandma behind and it was a new thing that we had to get used to. We, I don't know, it was, we, I don't know, I didn't like the feeling throughout, like, a year has passed, I still missed my hometown. Gavin Hill is fun, say. It kind of feels like back at home, back in my hometown, because you're surrounded by your own culture and your own language. And yeah, I don't know, because people talk so bad, so badly about it because how um, messy it is and it's not a clean environment. But for me, it's kind of, it's kind of feels like, like I'm back at home, you know? When I first went to my first primary, which was around like Govan Hill, um, I went there and I faced bullying and I faced a lot of racism growing up. It was because the way we dressed, the way we packed our lunch and they didn't like the smell of it. And I didn't, I never wanted to attend school because of it, but I loved school. I don't know how to describe this, but they would definitely not talk about our culture in classes. They would never talk about our history in classes. And once we got to know that, because we didn't know that there was so much out there about our history and about our culture until we got into the community. The educational outcomes are horrific for Roma Traveller Gypsy. It's, um, there was an article published in The Guardian in May and it was like 60, 70 percent, maybe even 80, it was really up there. The majority of people from that community have no qualifications and that's way higher than every single other ethnic group. So we as a school, we as a society are doing something wrong. We need to get better at engaging this wonderful community to make the most of their talents and to inspire um, the rest of the community and younger generations to come. Miss McFadden is my teacher in my school. She is one of my biggest supportive. She stands out for us. She knows that we struggle a lot, especially like us young Roma kids. She's always there for us. The class, the classes you get are just gorgeous. They're full of these individuals from diverse cultural backgrounds, some of whom have had very difficult journeys to make it to Glasgow, and a lot of whom are experiencing discrimination and prejudice every day, you know, whether it's low level or systemic or they don't recognise it. They are, yeah, so they've got, um, they've got a lot to overcome to get to class or to study or to achieve the outcomes and exams. And what I find teaching a class like that is everybody's present, everybody's ready, you know, everybody's wanting to learn. I recently, not recently, but it was last year when I was the first gypsy woman to be a house captain, which is like organizing things and um, going on trips and that and working together in a group. And I was the first. As a, as a Roma woman, 
you you will always get sexism, no matter what. In a gypsy culture, it's basically like the woman needs to stay home, clean, mm -hmm. cook, and the man goes to work. I definitely do think so. As a female, a Roma a woman, it's definitely hard. I don't want to get married and be a housewife. Like, that's not my dream. That's not what I've been like, fighting for my whole life. I came here to have a career, to make money, to have a car, and my own place. When we get forced into marriage a lot, and some girls to get pregnant at a young age. I mean, it's the best thing to be a mom. But something, I can't lie to you, some people, some moms see a mom is the best thing, but it's sometimes really tiring, you still have to wonder a big face, thank you, you're so you know, and... I set up like a, a women's well-being group, and you know, I always like love the idea of having like mothers, coming and relaxing, but you know, at the same time, they can bring their babies because, you know, it's hard with childcare and having a relaxing day, you know, pampering themselves, getting a nice massage, um, you know, having some makeup done or even doing like yoga and, you know, just relaxing from like the daily, you know, lives that they have, like cooking and cleaning and, you know, doing everything, you know, at the same time and looking after the kids. Um, yeah, it can be very hard on, on mothers, you know, um, especially because some, some women work as well, like myself. I work, I have three kids, and, you know, it's hard to juggle, like, work and kids at the same time. My teacher introduced me to the Man of Love, and they said that they wanted me in the community because my teacher was talking about how opinionated I am and how strongly I, I, like, I have strongly arguments with her and she was talking about it that would be good in this community and she said that I should sign up for it. I tried and here I am, three, two years later. So my name is Lydia Murphy and I'm a development officer with the Poverty Alliance and I work primarily on our Rights and Action project. Sammy and Polina are just two of the young people that have been involved in their Community Catalyst program and there is a whole other host of young people that are being involved at the moment, they're engaging in other work and I've watched them not only become people that are aware of their own rights but also people that are educating other people to be active rights holders and I just think it's been really inspiring and really wonderful watching them grow and watching them develop and the increases in confidence that has happened and in the previous workshop that we did, um, Sammy was bringing some of her own story to the table and it was just really wonderful. I kind of feel powerful, like, I don't know why, because I'm only 18 years old and I'm doing a big part that I wouldn't have thought I would come with my comfort zone into this. So I'm kind of proud of myself that I'm teaching other people and inspiring other people what, what is right and that they should know about their rights. And so many Roma people don't actually know about their their housing rights yeah. and you know what they're entitled to and you know there's so many cases that um, you know that Roma people are being like exploited. My dad struggled a lot he kind of had to take a break from work and you know start looking into new flats or houses or whatever but then I had to text my teacher saying sorry I can't come in for my exam because I had to stay up and help my family. I, all day, all night, searching for a flat, trying to find a place to stay, trying to calling agents every day, and 17-year-old, as me, it was hard until I had a meeting with the living rent. Now that I know that there's somebody out there, I don't feel so much alone. So my name's Izzy, and I'm part of Living Rent. We linked in with Romano Lavarang cases where people were being evicted. Um, we've picketed outside like flats um, with like Roma families and stuff and basically tried to halt the eviction from taking place. And then also like Roma Love does like a lot of work with like the young Roma community, so like the Community Catalyst program. So they invited us for the last two years to do a workshop and the basis of the workshop is like how to know and defend your rights. And in Living Rent, like, we really try and steer away from the language that we help others because we're a union 
So it's kind of like we want people to join, to ha have power themselves and for us to all grow our power together. In the back of my mind, I had an idea for a photography project that um, relates to different Roma communities and I didn't know any Roma people. So it was a way of, I, I approached Romano Lav as a way of starting a discussion about the possibility of starting this project that I had in mind. There's the Roma community within the Southside community and there's still a lot of work to be done for sort of bringing different people together and even though there, like, there's a lot of arts community sort of projects and activities, you, you still don't really see people together in the same space yeah. a lot. And it's quite interesting because we are aware of it, we talk about it and then we're like, oh yeah, there's diversity, this is a great place, but I'm like, well, where are we in the same spaces? I just think that using this, using this or any artistic tool, just um, initially, I think, for young people as well to really communicate what they want to say, use it as a tool to voice their feelings and that can be anger because quite rightly, like, there's a lot that they're going through and actually turning this into a bit of a powerful tool to express their emotions. And I find this particular group of young people, overall just like an incredible amount of talent, like really amazing photographs have come out of the projects. I feel like it'll be so cool if people see me in the future and we don't get really we don't get represented a lot. I, I've, I've never met a Roma person. I've never heard of a director or a filmmaker like as a Roma. And I feel like it is going to be inspiring for other people to see me directing a film one day, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Part of my role or part of my job is to try all sorts of different routes um, to engage the Roma community into the school more because I know that um, sometimes they don't feel welcome in schools or in public institutions. To get the kids into the classroom, to get them into the school, more often than they are usually, is, is the best. Is the best because it means bit by bit they're buying into education. And if they buy into education, that means more opportunities will open up. And then we get some Roma role models like Lena and the Catalysts. And then the younger kids can see this is what I can do if I just stick with, you know, commit to something. And then the outcomes improve bit by bit by bit by bit. And let's see this loudly, clearly, unequivocally. Diversity is a good thing. It is something to be celebrated, not something to be attacked and undermined. Gavin Hill. Gavin Hill is a community where we don't care where you come from. If you think of Govan Hill as your home, Govan Hill is your home.